now ends up revolving more around the hard skills or the real coding skills or how good of a coder they are and things like that they think that they have great communication so they keep on talking 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 about some random things and then they don't get to and a good team player sees that challenge he'll be able to figure out a way out or solve that problem that challenge very easily because he has read it as a potential employee uh, as a candidate are you uh, a right fit for the company are you aligning with the role is your cv matching what you said and things like that so really basic things so today we are talking about something um, i think very interesting so something around advice or maybe even guidance for um youngsters and young people who are trying to build a career in software development uh, so how they can sort of embrace this field how they can grow how they can build a career um and sort of build a life out of it um so yes great so i think uh, today's topic even is i i wanted to do this topic since very long time uh what i feel is majority of us who are living in mumbai and metro cities uh a lot of kids who are studying in colleges etc get really good edu- education as well as guidance career guidance in general but uh, for the people who are in tier 2 cities tier 3 cities even in tier 1 cities like mumbai there are a lot of people who don't have that much of guidance so this topic today is is going to be uh, focused on to uh guiding the youngsters for tech careers so that is a topic what do you think about this topic himanshu i think i think it's a very very good topic um and good topic is a very vague term but but vague term but still um i feel there are a lot of young uh talented or young sort of uh people who are out there ready to start their careers but do not uh sort of have the right guidance in a lot of uh cases or don't have the right resources or sometimes don't know what exactly they should be doing or what the employer is looking for and things like that so there there are a lot of things that happen um and i feel there's a, uh, there's also w- when we talk about the field of software development um i think it somehow ends up revolving more around the hard skills or the real coding skills or how good of a coder they are and things like that but when it actually comes to building a career with it uh as important as the hard skills are uh, the soft skills are very important as well and i feel that uh is very much sometimes lacking and as you said uh people maybe and i i don't know i mean this is probably just my thought but people in tier 1 cities uh going to good colleges there are uh different aspects that or different things that happen in the college all the way from cultural events to uh career counseling and things like that and this helps them build uh some sort of soft skills that they're going to be using uh in their actual career but when as you said when we talk about tier 2 and tier 3 cities uh people are more focused on the on the skill on the on the learning of the particular skill coding or whatever but they lack in that that soft skill space which plays a major role as we'll probably talk about more uh, in detail throughout the podcast uh, but it plays a major role for for these youngsters right so that's that's really what my thought is on this yeah so uh, who who are the target audience for this podcast uh, so guys uh, the people who are quite passionate about coding the people who are quite youngsters and who might be in college or might have left just graduated out of the college uh, who might be uh, just in their career transition phase and who want to build a very cream quality uh, of career in t- in software development is the target audience for this podcast and those would be the people who whom you should be sharing this podcast to as well as uh, those will be the people who will be benefiting out of this podcast so what are you going to get out of this pod- podcast one uh, the pre career phase two interviews and three the career phase so these are the three sections of this podcast that we'll be fo- uh, focusing on so let's start off with uh the first phase which is the pre career phase uh, so himanshu as you know uh, that our uh, education system in india is very theory driven irrespective of how much we 
talk that it, it is changing and all it's still not practical driven it is still a lot theory driven yes. compared to all the education that you get abroad uh i don't want to name specific countries but abroad so in india how can you build your career in software development is the uh flow of the podcast mm. now uh i want your take on it yes so as we were discussing even during the introduction that um software development a is a very very vast field there's there's uh, a lot of people in india who are attracted towards it it's a it's a highly booming field as well there's a lot of great potential there um but yet there are people who who aspire a certain uh, level or they look up to certain people in the field who have started as software developers and now they are at the highest ranks or whatever we want to call it um but yet they don't know the path to go towards it and what ends up happening is as you said the the education system in india ends up being a little too theory driven yes there are projects but even we have been through those phases uh, i'm sure things are ch- changing slowly and steadily but they haven't just yet um so there are projects for students to sort of do apply the theories they are learning and all of that but we all know how those projects go and everything so it's it's very much theory driven and people miss out on things that they need to be doing or the activities they need to be doing or the skills they need to be learning uh one very important aspect of it is uh going beyond software development there are skills that you need to learn which uh, w- what everyone calls them as soft skills uh and they are very important in any field because it it becomes a very important part of yourself how you carry yourself in in a workplace how you deal as a professional how you deal with people and as a matter of fact even how you deal with friends and in your personal life those soft skills really help and uh what my feeling on this is that um soft skills are you can divide into a lot of different aspects of it we can probably start uh talking about soft skills from a communication point of view which ends up being a very critical yet also a very important part of your professional journey that you need to be communicative and effective communicator which will help you a at the first stage even crack your interviews and all of that um uh, communication is going to be very important over there and then when you actually get into the job communication is going to be a very critical part of your job it's not just that you have to go in uh and you have to write code and get out of there right if that was the case then it'll be very easy for people to go up the ranks okay cool so you know when we talk about uh soft skills and we talk about a different uh we talk about a lot of different things uh that can be part of your soft skills uh a very important part of it is always going to be communication mm-hmm. and when we say communication um it not just means i'm talking to you or i'm able to talk to you you're able to talk to me i'm an approachable person i can talk to my friends yes that is communication but that is not professional communication that is not what you need to achieve in your professional uh, career in your professional life right what you need to achieve is being able to get your thoughts across to the other person for example you are explaining something to your team leader or you are explaining a task to your team members just being able to explain it is one thing and making sure that they understand what you're saying is one thing and that becomes a very important soft skill very true very true very true i have seen a lot of people just you know talking about they think that they have great communication so they keep on talking 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 about some random things and then they don't get to the point yeah. so you are absolutely right i think rehan shu badhiya bol raha let's go let's go to the next point uh um, yes so uh, also what ends up being very important um and a very important soft skill in your professional career or professional life is being a team player right that probably makes and breaks your uh your career growth you'll obviously be working but still you you want to be on a growth path uh and your self being a team player is is a very is going to play a very important role over there um and i feel you you've got a you've got a lot of good points to add when it comes to being a team player uh so i'd li- love to get some of your thoughts and i'll add on to it yeah so basically team players um uh... whenever we interview people na people always say there are three things that they always will you know say one is problem solving attitude second is being team player and third is they will mention some other soft adaptability adaptability might be one thing so when i then deep down 
dig them and ask them what is exactly you mean by team player so they said they say that we worked in a project and then academic project it was like two three people and la 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 but what i feel is not the exact definition of team player according to what a work culture requires i feel the exact uh, definition of team player is i'll i'll just you know distinguish between a good uh, team player and a bad team player okay yes. so uh, a good team player is generally more inclined towards making their team's life easy which actually is creating less dependencies what is dependency dependency is when say for example you have been given a task and there are two options that one you put in some lorem ipsum text in a, in the placeholder second is you just don't put in anything there and then you wait for you create a dependency on someone else and then wait for the content writer to come to you and give that text and so on and so forth so a good team player would be he will go on chat gpt create a text that he wants and just put in there as a placeholder that way you have got your work done properly even if there is any delay in the team content delivery that's still fine you have completed your work it is a production quality work so less dependencies i'll give you another example say for example you are building a website of a uh, of a company and you can very easily google the company's name or their clients names and logos on google find those logos and just put it into your project as if you don't have uh, the data in your hand but a bad team player will create a dependency oh first give me all the logos then only i'll do this 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 because project does not ever go into you know very yeah. gant way yeah. there are going to be gaps there are going to be you know hiccups and a bad team player is the person who will stall the work a good team player is the person who will not stall the work and will work for the team so that team is team one forward. correct and uh, i think i think second thing is being self learning now how does this distinguishes a bad team player versus a good team player a batting player will never ever ever learn or maybe they will learn by a very less magnitude and a good team player will always invest their time their free time into learning something good from internet now what happens is when there is a new project that comes on boarded or when there is a new challenge that that comes on boarded and a good team player sees that challenge he will be able to figure out a way out or solve that problem that challenge very easily because he has read it somewhere else he have consumed some content here and there but a bad team player he has been never learning has been what a bad team player thinks is okay my work is my learning but that is there you have to do additional on the top top, top of that so that is the bad team player i feel uh, and generally a good team player gets into the habit of learning by utilizing it their free times that gives him additional edge additional acceleration and speed to move faster into their career graph is what i have observed um and i think the most and the foremost important thing that separates a good team player versus a bad team player is being relentlessly resourceful continuously resourceful uh so i'll give you a, a small example of a of a guy that i know of and he was uh, back in the day he was an asp.net developer and uh, uh when i used to give him if when when there used to be another project in uh, some other technology i used to ask him hey are you going to uh, are you interested in doing this project because it's not in your comfort domain and he used to always say yes to it he used to take up that project he used to you know initially he used to find really difficult things and you know all this learning curve unlearn things learn things again but that way he used to always say yes to a different different kinds of project in fact he also did being an asp.net developer he did eventually php then angular then knock, knockout then uh, react monstack microservices and not only that he also did a raspberry pi project which is not at all in his domain it's not even i i, I mean it's it's towards iot more, more than yeah, yeah. and the result was he became a good cross domain expert and now he is in his epitome of his career right now so being continuously and relentlessly resourceful is one speciality that i have seen in uh, these uh, uh, good team players 
regarding bad team players i think there are two major qualities that i have observed uh, three major qualities out of which one i think is 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 given by you which is procrastination i mean everybody procrastinates right but then there has to be a a threshold to the procrastination there has to be a there has to be <laughs> so there has to be always a a limit to the procrastination and the more you procrastinate the more you go into the bad team player quality uh another two of the qualities that i think is one is justifying yes justifying is a quality which i feel is a bad player quality which means if they have done something bad they will justify it they'll reason it like oh because this because that because this because that a great team player is like okay it's bad it is bad quality they own it right so that is one quality i feel of a, a really good versus bad team players and second quality is a uh, complaining so in and it's it's not related to software development career i feel it's it's regarding life if you are a complaining person you will attract all the crap of the world the same way if you are complaining software developer you will attract the crap of the crap jobs but if you are the person who is a non complaining who are the go getter you will attract the best of the best jobs so think in the long term i feel these are the three top most soft skills or combination of attitude is what or mindset you can call it is something that separates a uh, a really good player versus a bad player what do you think about this yes absolutely i feel um you've defined it very clearly uh between a good and a bad team player because it very clearly shows um as we as we all know being a team player is a very important thing but saying that on a resume that i am a team player and actually being one are two very different things uh and actually we defined it very clearly that uh if you are there out there to do the bare minimum um we all know you're a bad team player because you just don't care about growth or you don't care about uh what you want to do next in your career right and if you're out there and you are the go getter who actually wants to just take on whatever comes their way and see what happens and fail at times as well which is not a bad thing by the way uh fail at times uh but then keep learning and keep growing because that just expands your horizon so wide um uh, that it helps a lot in your career growth right so being a team player is very very important and i think that's the way to do it um i also think there's one very uh crucial soft skill for specifically for a software developer uh and i think i would like to define that soft skill as uh thinking ahead because what happens with software developers uh quite uh, quite a bit of times that they see a problem or they see uh, uh something that they need to build and they build it right uh but they're not they're not thinking two steps ahead uh, and what i mean by saying two steps ahead is for example if i have a uh, a user interface design that i need to write html and css for right uh and i just looked at the design i'm like cool okay this is what i'm replicating i start writing my html css because i'm really good at html css and uh five hours later i have the output ready to run and show uh but it turns out that the actual interactive elements of the um ui are supposed to function in a way that the currently written html wouldn't support now this could have been very easily avoided by first thinking what the output of this user interface design is going to be how are the in, uh, elements going to be interactive how the users are going to interact with it what are the considerations that i need to take in mind a lot of times software developers don't uh, do this they do but after a certain after getting to a certain point in their career after obviously after gaining quite a bit of experience everyone is doing this because this is not rocket science this is not something we are coming up with right but as young software engineers who are just coming out in the market trying to get a job these are very crucial skills that they can learn at this stage and be ahead of the curve already right so thinking ahead is one um and then also i think uh, we talked about it overall but being a real problem solver rather than just saying i'm a problem solver because problem solving is not just looking at a problem and having the solution but it's actually devising the solution let it be a software development problem or problem within the team when you're building a project or anything it's more about seeing a problem and devising a solution working out a way to get out of it that is the approach somebody needs to keep uh and i really feel that these young uh chaps should 
learn these skills more than just putting it on their resume and will vast greatly help them um so so yes i think uh that is how we can talk about soft skills in the in the space of software development great i think um now that say uh, a guy is all equipped with all these soft skills his, his mindset is right and now he wants to go for an interview okay or he wants to build, start building his career which obviously starts with interview let's discuss about the stages which comes before the interview as well okay. which is our which we call it as pre career stage so let's let's just discuss about that too absolutely so anybody uh, i mean uh, pre career say for example being in a college is not necessary to be in a college to be pre career but for example you're just in your college and uh, you currently pre career you're not looking for uh, jobs but you're actually developing those skills you're learning the languages and all of that uh, <coughs> sorry um when you're in your pre career stage and you're learning all these skills and everything i think there are a lot of activities that these guys can do um for example um becoming part of open forums where there are conversations going about certain uh, areas of software development certain languages there are certain problems they are trying to solve there are certain conversations they are having always becoming a part of such forums not just reading them but if you have something insightful however naive it is to contribute into that forum talk to people get into the communicate community uh, continuously learning because we all know the education system is going to teach you a certain thing to get certain grades and all of that's going to happen but you still need to be self learning you need to be doing a lot of uh need to be current with the technologies that's out there what are being used in the industries uh applying those learnings building small softwares maybe building small solutions uh doing some sort of freelance work something but actively using your time to build something because uh what i'm trying to sort of tell here in in this stage just being in in a university and getting good grades is not the goal that can be achieved by anybody uh, can be achieved by a person who just comes and reads the books very thoroughly and writes the exams properly good grades here yeah. but that is not building your skills that is not building you to get ready for the for the interviews and for the career that's upcoming for you right so that is my feeling on this this pre career stages okay so i uh, i have a, i am a huge believer of uh, this concept called as seeding and i feel that irrespective if you are doing your career if you are doing uh, if you are if you are trying to run a business or you know in any aspects of you, of your life i believe seeding works okay what do i mean by seeding in in our uh, in our today's topic what i mean is the way you suggested that you should be very active on github projects and you know you should be very active on to the open source networks and uh, contribute to a lot of projects so these are all aspects i feel of are of seeding and i believe seeding can be done offline as well as online offline also there are a lot of these networking events which keeps on happening wherein there are a lot of nerdy people a lot of coders a lot of programmer a lot of business developers they come and they meet and that's wherein you get to understand what are the market trends going on where all can you specialize in what is the market uh, requirement and also you meet very uh, you know updated people who then share with you a couple of things you make good friends there and that's wherein you keep on seeding your image and building your brand as a developer into their brains you can also build uh, the seeding online as well like for example answering very relevant questions on quora or stack overflow people do use stack overflow as a repository of getting knowledge but there are people who have contributed to the knowledge right and you can start small so you can anytime go do commenting do replying to the answers then uh, keep on you know uh, searching for the 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 topics which in which you are trying to specialize in and then keep on networking there you meet a couple of people there you do uh, you know one on one messaging with them like that so i feel and linkedin is a great platform i feel there are a lot of groups wherein you can go and have interaction yes i know a lot and a lot of people who have got excellent jobs through all these networking in fact i have been myself one back in the day it was not that much of online networking as it was offline 
and i got my first job job in an offline networking event and we all went there and there was some topic of discussion that uh, some speaker was talking about and we all were sitting that's where some friend of mine introduced me to my first employer and that's when i got my first job so i feel uh, seeding is a very important thing seeding also combined with a lot of side projects does a big magic because the moment you take up any side project it can be a free project it can be a less paid project it can be an internship project it can be a freelancing project it can be any of these it can be a pro bono also you know it's not necessary that only uh, freshers do take pro bono there are a lot of experienced people there are a lot of companies also in fact we also did do a bit, lot of pro bono projects so pro bonos you can do for any ngos or or for a good social cause if you are interested in that you can do it for your college i know a guy who developed our college website and eventually used that website as a credential uh, to do his ms right so all these seeding is what contributes eventually to your career growth and i feel it has to be done consistently it's not that one day you did and then you'll expect that that should happen conceding itself the concept itself is continuous consistent putting in small 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 efforts everywhere so as to eventually it will have a compounding effect yes. so i feel uh, in the pre career phase seeding um, plays a big role absolutely um and i feel you made a lot of good points and one of them being that contributing to stack overflow and not just getting information from it and a lot of people get stuck that how how do we contribute like we need to know something right uh and there's a very interesting yet easy way to start at least what you can do is if you have searched something and uh you got an answer and you used that answer into your work you can add on to that same chain maybe something that you did differently something that helped you something that you came up something insightful that you have on that topic so you're not looking for a new question out there that you have the answer to that you need to answer right contributing can be replying to the chain of comments with your insights and things like that as well so that is a easy way to start because a lot of people get stuck over there that okay yeah uh, you saying that we need to contribute but how do we contribute right um so that's one um i think um that's that's pretty good about the the pre career stages the doing the self projects contributing to uh the, these forums uh, offline and online networking um and do you have anything to add yeah so i i wanted your views on certifications because i feel a lot of youngsters out there speci- specifically who are who want to get into software development they do fall for this certification uh yes. kind of thing wherein i mean if if you are certified by microsoft or oracle whoever java and all that that's still fine but there have been now small small agency who are self certifying things so people do get you know fall into these traps so let's discuss a bit about certifications how much do certificates contribute to your actual uh, career opening um yes so um i've i've got very different thoughts on certifications and i'll add, I'll, i'll i'll bring that on here so for so, so for software developers um i feel certifications play a very small role to be very blunt and honest why because if you're doing all these uh, seeding activities side projects and all those things in your pre career stages that is going to be more of a credibility of your applicative work than having a piece of paper right um if now obviously certifications are bound to add some value as well it's not that they're not go- that not going to add value so how certifications can add value or how can you look out for a certification yes big names are good microsoft certified uh, amazon certified like aws certified whatever that's all those are all good things they help you more when you are actually in your career stages and you are applying things and something new has come out from aws that you have just done a certification on so now you know how to apply that and it's much more easier for you to do it at that stage as well because you are all <clears throat> because all the experience you already have um and also it helps you at that stage but in your pre career stages you are looking at certifications just from a piece of paper point of view 
And that approach is incorrect because if you just want a piece of paper and put it in your resume that you are Amazon certified or you are Microsoft certified or Oracle certified, that is not going to help because that is not going to tell an employer that, okay, this person has done something different. So he knows because they are still going to evaluate you for your skills. Yes, if doing that certifications help you learn something new and if you're going in with that approach, absolutely please do certifications in the pre-career stages as well because it is absolutely an added credibility but it is more if you learn something and then you apply it somewhere and you show a practical application of what you learned over there and what you did in your work right just having a piece of paper is not going to help is what i mean feel because a lot of times getting that piece of paper is easier than actually learning that skill and employers know that so this is this is what i feel about certifications yeah so i have very similar thoughts on certification the the thing is that i have seen a lot of people who are certified but when you act, give actual assignment to for, to them you know and they just uh, mess it up so i feel that certifications are good for screening wherein if you are applying somewhere and if you have certification attached onto your resume so your interview might get aligned probabilistically uh, more than someone who has not but it ends there it's not going to help you clear the interview, get you the job and etc, etc. No. So you can do the certification. It's good for credibility purpose and initial screening. So basically you can, on, on a scale of 100, uh, 5 to 10 percent, that might help. That to not to get you the job, but to get you in the front of front seat in front of the interviewer. Yes. So that is uh, what my thoughts are on certifications. Um, so, okay, fine. So people have seeded, say for example, they did a bit of certification they were active on these forums they did networking offline online as well as they have started learning also they have also done a bit of uh, these uh, 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 projects side projects now let's talk about the actual interview and how the interviews they should they should think of interviews as and from what aspect should they align themselves in the interview so as far as i know majorly throughout pan india as well as outside also i'm sure uh, there are three stages in which it goes through the first is of course the one which hr handles then the second one uh, is where you are graded technically so technical interview hr round technical round they, that they call and the third one is the personal interview so these are the three stages that i feel uh, generally the uh, the interviews are done on and uh, let's just uh, cover up these uh, three st stages also step one by one by one yes. let's start off with the first stage Manshu. yes so um now absolutely when you've done all the stuff that you uh, mentioned and now you're going out to do interviews um you're gonna lo you're gonna do interviews probably with a few companies uh, a lot of the companies will have slightly different formats of doing it they'll probably give you a pre-screening say test and then get you into hr might straight get you into hr and things like that so again, your soft skills that you have developed are going to massively help you in your uh, interview stages. Now, what is very important from your end is two things. One, understanding the different stages of the interview that you uh, that the employer has told you that this is what you're going to go through. And two, ask questions to the potential interviewer as well. Whenever they are aligning your interview, they're telling you, okay, you're going to come in for the first HR round. Please ask questions to understand the outcome of it, to understand what is required from their end, because each of these stage means something for the employer. They are gauging a different thing at every stage. The HR is looking for making sure you're right for the role. You have uh, the right keywords in your CV. You have done the right roles. Again, this is not going to straight away qualify you that you can do it, right? But at least it's qualifying you. So you're doing all those things right. And then when you're doing the HR interview, they are gauging different kind of things that as a as an employee as a potential employee uh, as a candidate are you uh, a right fit for the company are you aligning with the role is your cv matching what you said and things like that so really basic things so go in with that approach of making sure that you convince them that this is me and this is what i do uh this is my resume and this is all what i've done this is the kind of work i do and stuff like that and then when you're in the technical round again all of that is done you don't need to show in the technical round all those things your cv and the and the good culture fit and all of that but you really just show your technical skills and be able to execute what they are asking you to execute now these days technical interviews are uh, in a broad spectrum somebody will give you a few simple tasks somebody will give you one very difficult task somebody will even give you a task and uh, actually give you a couple of days to solve it 
because it's not cannot be done in front of them instantly yeah. and things like that so it's it's a broad spectrum so you need to understand what the task is what are the outcomes of that task as well and try and demonstrate your skills to achieve those outcomes uh because a lot of times what happens in technical rounds people will think oh okay yeah cool they're going to ask me to write a program i just need to make sure to write a program they're not asking you to write a program they know you can write a program that's how you've completed your engineering or your bsc it or something they are trying to gauge your technical skills your problem solving skills and all of that so as i said earlier that you need to understand what each round is for and try and demonstrate those skills for the interviewer so they can understand okay this person is able to do this and similarly in personal interview so these are this is what i feel how a, a candidate can go about uh like initially about interviews there are a lot of different things to talk about when we talk about interviews as well but this is my initial thoughts on it yeah so i think i want to take a touch upon a bit of other points as well in all these three stages the first stage of course being hr i feel resume is something that needs to be touched upon uh people make very very bad resumes there are i feel only 5 to 10% of people who have uh made really great resume and uh, what i feel is in a technical resume a resume should not be a readable resume it should be a scannable resume what i mean by scannable resume is when you just see the one page or two page you should be able to very easily figure out within couple of seconds what this guy is doing or has been doing yes. um your job roles or your any project role should be very clear cut you know responsibilities you just write one two three four lines whatever technologies you just write comma separated technologies and keywords wherein you can write certain keywords or you did some integration payment gateway whatever 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 like that so if you if you just write it very clearly and make certain things bold and you know it may, make it very scannable that then does a lot of work for you because your resume is your representation when you are not there in front of them yes. and also it is going to float from the, all the three stages so hr is going to see it your uh, uh, technical guy is also going to see it and your personal interview guy is also going to see it so the H, the resume has to be made properly is what i feel um, there are a lot of services available online who uh, can uh, manual services are there as well as there are a couple of automated ai related services also available uh using which you can get your uh resume done properly um other than that i feel in the technical round um i can't stress hard enough that business logic is what people do has been focusing on and will focus on because people go there with a the preparation of okay fine i have learned react i have learned node js i have learned x y z technology and i know this technology but the problem is not the technology the problem is your brain yes you might know english you might know marathi you might know hindi but if your thoughts are not correct you are not able to formulate them correctly then what's the use of these languages similarly the computer also understands all these three languages but your business logic the way you think about the problem has to be correctly fixed these interviews are going to test your business logic first before the actual technology because technological the technology is what it's just syntax and syntax is anyway available freely so i feel business logic building is one thing that people should work on how do you work on it there are plenty of things that you can use uh, there are a lot of uh, youtube videos available in which there are people who are guiding you through building something like a game or whatsapp clone or shopify clone or i don't know what uh, evernote clone like this and there are platforms like code chef wherein from very beginner level to very advanced level there are different different type of business logic based questions are there wherein developers can go and or solve these questions so there are always uh, these ways by ways ways by which you can build your business logic uh, so this this i think might cover up your second round which is a technical round once you ace your second round so first round was regarding your basic uh, if you are eligible or not second is if you're technically eligible or not so in the second round say for example if you have great communication skills amazing communication skills or rattery your public speaker but if you fail in the technical round you're anyway out but on the contrary if say for example your communication skills are a bit not brushed up 
but still if you get the output done then the probability of you getting hired is still high that brings to the second uh, third stage which is personal interview people do focus on different things in personal interviews what do i focus on is the mindset mindset of the candidate what kind of culture that candidate is coming from and is he going to be fit into our culture or not provided his communication skills and technical skills are everything so then scenario based questions are generally asked and you have to genuinely answer these questions if you are not answering these questions right or if your communication is not that great then you will probably not leave that impression of you know uh, being hired and in a country like india when if i go for any uh, interview opening any uh, job opening if the requirement is 10 people i get cvs of 100 people daily that is how uh, intense the competition is wherein you need to pump up your game technically as well as in communication skills is what i feel and i think if we take care of all these three parts plus your seeding is correct you will definitely get the job but the point is once you get the job then what happens next because i have seen a lot of people do crack interviews they get great packages because their interview went very very well but once they get on to their job they are given the task to do they fail miserably at the task and then they are fired within within couple of months so what is your take on it yes so as you said that some candidates do crack or do great in their interview because because of certain things because they just somehow got through the technical round because they knew how to do the task and they're great communicators so they got through and everything but when it comes to the real world which is your actual work um and you cannot deliver nobody is going to stand that um and <clears throat> and that does happen that does happen quite a bit now my feeling on this is um exactly that that you will get fired and what i mean by that is um uh, however good you are at communicating and however good you are maybe interviewing and getting past interviews you're going to you you're not going to stick anywhere you're not going to be able to grow your career anywhere because uh one day or the other um uh, somebody will find out or you will say be exposed or whatever because i've had uh, similar situations i've hired um software developers in the past and and in the interview uh it was one thing but when it was on the actual job Uh, my expectation with the experience that person had come with uh was high obviously because there were certain years of experience there was certain past work that i saw uh in fact there were references as well which is weird that uh, somehow there were references um and then there was the interview uh questions or whatever the technical round and everything and and, and that person got past everything but when we were giving that person tasks to finish um uh, you won't believe uh what we went through was um there was a project that was supposed to be done in a span of 10 working days so two weeks um uh, and my project managers were checking at the end of the first week yes things are going well i'm happy to deliver end of next week the next week he was saying i'm happy to deliver i'm happy to deliver and on the day of delivery is like oh i'm going to need a couple more days which happens with projects we every uh, very often see that somebody is giving you a timeline and at the end they do need a couple of extra days and as as managers we would always buffer that in and things like that but to our surprise it turned out a few more days later that there was nothing done because he actually could not do it oh so i mean obviously a month later he was fired but that something like that is not going to stand so this is an advice to all the young uh, uh people out there who are just getting out into the uh industries don't like don't even think about doing this because it's not going to take you anywhere either leave the uh sort of career completely and get into something else if you're not good at it and if you don't like doing it but this is not going to take you anywhere because you cannot stick at a job more than a few months um and also looks bad on yourself right so that's um never good to hamper your own re- reputation so that's my feeling on it Yeah yeah even i feel so because i have faced a lot of people who uh, who got hired by a company and then eventually they got uh, you know they got stuck into either bad deliverables or bad uh, either quality deliverables 
uh, and this is not just related to I'm talking about software development. This is even in project management. I've seen yeah. this is even in a lot of other uh, business uh, markets. I've seen and um, one of the other reason also they get fired is because of bad attitude too. So a lot of hiring do happen focused very much on technical aspect. But if you have bad attitude, yeah. nobody can help you anyway. You will soon get fired and you can't do anything about it. So, um, yes, you're right, Imanshu. And that brings me to uh, touching upon some very common points that I feel uh, that I want to share is one is the problem with instant gratification that our current youngsters are facing is, you know, uh, you click off a button, you get Uber, you click off a button, you get Zomato. And, uh, you know, they also think that click off a button, they'll get a job. That's not with, happening. With, with high salaries. Yeah, with, with exotic salaries. That's not happening because companies do rely on efforts. Right. They want to see the efforts that people are putting in into them. After seeing the efforts, they will then start delivering results to them. So without efforts, nothing happens in this world, irrespective of how much uh, fancy you are. It's India and we have plenty of people there. There is always going to be the other guy who will be doing better than you in the same uh, efforts that is required. So um, that is one thing uh, I, I also want to put a bit of efforts on. Uh, utilizing empty time, especially weekends. Yes. What I have observed is the people who work religiously on weekends, not work as for the company's uh, work I'm saying, but on themselves, tend to grow faster in, in, a, in a lot momentum in, in their career versus the people who think that, oh, five days I have done such a great work and two days I need now rest. I think it, I, I treat everything as wild, you know, the market is wild, the job market is wild, the business market is wild. The animals in the wild don't, you know, get up on a Sunday or a Saturday and say that it's a weekend and we're going to sleep today because it's a day off. No, for them, they rest when they get tired, not because it's a weekend. The same applies to our lives too. I feel you rest when you have when you get tired by putting in a lot of efforts as well as generating some amount of results, not because there is a weekend across. So this habit of the 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 uh, way we have you know conditioned our brains for the weekend is very very bad. I feel, and you should definitely put all the efforts. You should work eight hours on a weekend. Also, work on yourself. Yes. I know a guy who was there who used to always write research on very detailed topics, tech topics, detailed challenges, used to solve those challenges and create a blog out of it so that everybody can be affected, uh, you know, positively because of it. And he got a great job because of that. And the job that he got was from a guy reading his blogs on his website and then communicating to him regarding if you want to work with us. So I feel seeding works, continuous efforts do work. Instant gratification never works. Uh, utilizing your empty time into building that consistency works. Uh, and one more pointer is staying away from controversies. Once you get a job, it's very easy uh, for you to get into the politics as well as con controversies. And sometimes you might have a good communication skill. You might have a great tech skills. But then due to some controversy, you might be thrown out. So staying away from controversy always uh, helps you. Uh, even if somebody is trying to bully you or, you know, this and that in your job life. But if you're a great delivering guy, if you're a great tech guy, eventually you will in the long term find a great path is what I believe in. So Imanju, your comments. Yes, um, absolutely. I feel um, your an um, analogy that you used uh, comparing it to a, to a jungle, to a forest um, is very right because I think people are conditioned towards saying I work five days and I, I take a two day. Uh, I don't work Saturdays and Sundays, which is OK. Don't work. Don't work for the company. Don't work for your employer, but absolutely work on yourself and don't treat it like work. It is self growth. You need to constantly be growing. Continuous learning is a thing and we need to know it's a thing. You finished your college, you've cracked a great interview, you got a high paying job, but does it end there? No, because do you want to stay at that job forever with that same salary? No, 
you want to grow and we have been talking about career growth and growing and developing skills to grow right but people take a lot of effort till they get a job which is one thing which is the pre career stage and during the interviews they do all these activities but once they've gotten a job now they get into the mindset of that whole uh five day and then work life balance yes have a work life balance i'm not saying just work but weekends are the only time of free time is the only time when you're not working so you utilize that to grow yourself and that can be in anything not just software development just personal growth in a lot of different aspects so absolutely i think that's a that's a very important point um and other other points such as uh seeding and and staying away from controversies that absolutely helps uh in a, in a in a uh, professional life uh in a professional uh, works uh, environment for somebody um so so yeah i mean overall i think today we have talked about a lot of good points um starting all the way from what sort of soft skills you need to be developing as a as a future software developer and then how do you get through the whole pre career stages uh like contributing to forums being part of say stack overflow doing pro- projects in open github repositories and things like that and then also how do you do your interviews all the way from the hr round to the personal interview rounds and then things to look out for or things to do when you are actually uh working in your when you when you have been employed um so i think overall it's been a great um uh podcast a great conversation what are, what are your feelings on this Yeah I think uh, we touched upon most of the points which are important which we feel are important which we believe that everybody should do and there are a couple of here and there points which I think uh, might we might cover up in the next podcast Absolutely. but for uh, till then I think we have co- covered up we have covered up most of the uh sections which might take a fresher career to its best and Absolutely. that and that brings to the end of the podcast thanks himanshu for being here and I am Ritesh Kedar this is Himanshu Kaushik and we are on the Human AI podcast <laughs>